Hello, dears. Welcome to Beautiful Heart. I'm Lily, as an ice lady. Today, I will be sharing with you all about my eyeshadow palette pack. Everybody is doing so. I think this is a great idea too. So here I am doing this pack as well. Some of these eyeshadow palettes are older than my teenager niece, and some of the brands you may not heard before. And some are Asia brand. The original creators for this tag is Samantha March and Eddie Glance. They are doing collaboration in this tag. And I will link their video in the iCard and also in the description box below to give them credits. Hopefully, this video can make you dears to understand me better. I won't tag anybody, but if you feel like doing this tag, please give credits to the original creators who are Samantha March and Eddie Glance. Thank you so much. Otherwise, please share with me in the comment section below. Which is your oldest eyeshadow palette, and so let's get started. Question number one: What is my newest eyeshadow palette? Actually, not one, but four, because I bought them at the same time. Which are these? Silky Girl Truly Nude Eyeshadow Palettes I just did a review about them because one of my audience is asking for the review and I will link the video in the iCard and also in the description box below just in case you dears want to find out more about them and some of my eyeshadow palettes orders are flying on the way to me like the Mulan palette from Colourpop and some beauty based eyeshadow palettes Second question What is my oldest eyeshadow palette? A bit embarrassed to say, but this palette is actually not a palette; it's a trail. It has been with me for about twenty years, older than my teenager niece. Which is this? I don't know. You guys have heard of before. This is from Shiseido, and this is the purple color. This is the second palette I bought from them. The first was a green one, which was more memorable than this purple because. Back then, I never dared to wear green, and I never wear green before. And I thought, who will wear green? Maybe the evil spirits in the movies. So back then, I was doing my first permanent job, and I was shopping with my secondary school friend, and we still keep in contact till now. And times fly. We have all changed. Yeah. That was so long ago, and now she's a mother of four. So she was with me shopping, and our favorite shopping center was Takashimaya Orchard. And we were shopping at the departmental store, the cosmetic section, and I saw this palette series. So the sales assistant was sharing with me the green one, and it really frightens me. And that was when I just started exploring makeup and colors. At the end of the day, I bought the green one. I went back home and tested it out on my eyes. And surprisingly, the green actually complements my yellow skin very well. In fact, it looks a bit natural, much more natural than the purple one. Purple is always my favorite eyeshadow color, so I have no problem wearing this. But what surprised me was the green, and because of the green, I bought the purple. So that was about twenty years ago. The colors had some changes, and I'm not sure whether you guys can see there are some spots. So definitely, I will not wear this or. To even hand swatch it, but I will just keep it one side for memorial purpose. The next question is, what is my most expensive eyeshadow palette? I bought this palette this year, which is this Charlotte Tilbury Instant Pillow Talk. I did a review about this, and this disappointed me. And now it has a very strong crayony smell, so I'm not sure whether this has already turned bad or what. Because on the visual side, there is no defects at all, just that the smell has changed. Again, I will link my video about this review. So if you guys are curious about it, please watch for more details. Save your money. Don't buy. The fourth question: What is my most affordable eyeshadow palette? Actually, I already decluttered that, and this is at the extreme end from my expensive eyeshadow palette. I bought it from Daiso. Daiso is where it's a Japanese store selling a lot of things for just two sing dollar each. Maybe something like a value shop. In US, I'm not so sure because I've never been to a value shop, and they have this small segment selling cosmetic. And back then, I'm still not a cruelty-free user, so I'm not so sure whether they are cruelty-free. But now I don't buy from them anymore. 
So I bought actually two quartz from them. One is the purple one as usual and one is the brown one. I have already decluttered these two because the smell was really very bad and the powder has already hardened. So no matter how many times you pick up and you want to apply on the eyes, nothing will show up. And yes, that was my most affordable eyeshadow palettes. Question number five, what is my everyday eyeshadow palettes? Actually, I work from home way before the circuit breaker period or the quarantine period. I don't apply makeup every day, so let alone my eyeshadow. And when I do wear eyeshadow besides facing the camera, usually I will just pick up single eyeshadows with sparkle. So I don't actually have an eyeshadow palette that I use every day. Question number six What is my most colorful eyeshadow palettes? I have a few colorful rainbow colors eyeshadow palette, but this brand really surprised me by their quality. Makeup with Rising Phoenix. This is a Singapore indie brand, and I'm so ashamed they have been around for coming this year will be 10 years. I never heard of them till a few years back when I watched my fellow YouTube friends reviewing about this brand, and they are from the US. This is the Greek God and Goddess palette. Makeup with Rising Phoenix specialized in colors. Bold, vibrant, colorful colors. So all their palettes and singles are very colorful. So this is one of the colorful palettes they have. And they specialize in shimmers, dual chromes, dual chromes with glitters, multi-chromes, multi-chromes with glitters. Their mattes are also very colorful. And the good part about them, recently we just discussed. The eyeshadow formula lasts on my eyes the whole day without fading. And this is what I encountered recently. I bought the Charlotte Tilbury Intern Pillow Talk and also the Natasha Denona Love and Sunrise. They cannot last on me and they are very expensive. But this makeup with Rising Phoenix lasts on my lid the whole day. Question number seven What's my smallest eyeshadow palette? I do not want to mention about this trio because it's a trio, it's not actually a palette. And I also don't want to touch about this Silky Girl Truly Nude eyeshadow palette because I had one eyeshadow palette that is smaller than this which is the Viseat Petite Pro 3 I've already decluttered that because it is not worth my money It's about a pound size or slightly lesser and it's a 6 pence eyeshadow palette Formula is not really worth the money The mattes can't show up The shimmers, I feel that the formula seems to be very similar to the Colourpop type which is much cheaper than the Viseat palette. And to the extreme end, what is my biggest eyeshadow palette which is question number 8. This. Morphe 39A. This is a collaboration between Morphe and James Charles. And there are 39 colours here. I've mentioned before, I don't know how to process big eyeshadow palettes and I saw the dark navy blue here which is the matte formula it starts to become moldy See the mold over here? Ah, I have to decolor that eyeshadow So I don't know how to process big eyeshadow palettes and so I just bought them and put one side so I don't use it Next question what is my best memory eyeshadow palettes? I will have to say from Makeup with Rising Phoenix again Same packaging but different palette This is their Never Winter Autosis And again this is a matte light purple It's moldy I have a lot of moldy products like eyeshadows and lipsticks because my room is very very humid This is the most memorable one because last year when they launched these eyeshadow palettes I am very honoured and very blessed They sent me this palette and led me to be the very first beauty YouTuber to review this palette I was actually very surprised because my channel is so small Why should they allow me to be the first one to review them? So this is very kind of them and after playing with them for a very long while, I do not want to use any other palettes because it has a lot of very interesting colors. This is my most, most, most favorite color of them all. I already showed this many times in my video. It's a multi chrome. 
there's pink, there's a bit of green and it's so smooth, so pretty. And all their shimmer formulas are very fantastic, very smooth, creamy, buttery, pigmented. Likewise for their mattes. Okay, question number 10. Which is the palette that is worth the hype? I would define hype as the company is paying money for advertisement or letting a lot of beauty influencers to talk about their eyeshadow palettes and their products when they launch. That has so many people talk about it and it works for me are all worth the hype. So there are actually a lot. But the one that comes straight up from my mind will be this Soft Glam from ABH. Because this is one of the first few eyeshadow palettes I bought from Beautylish. Yeah, either Beautylish or Beauty Bay. More to the higher end side. Not only that, this is my very first ABH palette. Formula is a bit loose. You can get a lot of keep back in the pan, but it's super blendable, super pigmented. And the color is very nice. You can use it for every day. You can use it on the wedding, on a lot of occasions. You can also use it on the bride. Question 11. Why is the eyeshadow palette that is not worth the hype? Actually, I have a list. Mainly because they fit on me very fast or I think that the quality is not that good and doesn't match up with the price and the hype. But I've already decluttered some of them and mentioned all of them except for this very one palette. I mentioned it over here. It's not because the quality is not good. In fact, I find that the quality is quite good on my eyes. But it's just that the color doesn't inspire me to use it. And this is the one. From Jeffree Star, Mini Controversy. This was selling like a hot cake. There is a bigger version. I forgot what this is the name. This is in collaboration with Shen Dawson. They have their documentary show which I did not follow them. And that's probably why it sold out like a hot cake. After a few hours of their launch, it's also out. Incredible. I like the cute little pictures and bras in the eyeshadow. But the issue is, I find that the colors is very random. Jeffree Star is a very artistic, very creative person. I'm not so artistic, I'm not so creative, I'm just a normal consumer. So I cannot appreciate his creativity in colours and that's why for many times I want to use this but each time when I saw the colours, I just put that one side. Only use like twice on my eyes. That's it. I don't think this is a standalone palette, I think this is a complementary palette. Question 12. What is my favourite palette from my favourite brand? I have many favourite brands like ABH, Makeup Rising Phoenix, Colourpop but I'm going to mention the most affordable one of them all which is Colourpop. <laughs> and this is the one. Give it to me straight. I love the mauve, the pinks, the naturals. And I can use this for everyday use for many many occasions. So this is my most favorite palette from my most favorite brand. And the last question, what is the most used eyeshadow palette? I started off exploring singles and trios and quads. It's only the recent years I started to explore more into palettes and from then on, I have about 400 over palettes. Yes, that much. Mainly because I bought a lot from Colourpop, Revolution Beauty and I have to hit their free international shipping purchase amount and I have to keep buying and buying and buying to hit that amount. And that's why I ended up with so many palettes. And because I have so many eyeshadow palettes, I don't really use them as much as I want to. If I were to choose one palette that is the most used, that would have to be the palettes I bought many 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 years ago. Which, okay, not 20 years ago but around 15 years ago. Or maybe slightly more than that. Plus minus. Which is... This is from Testimore. I think this is under Carnival. It's a Japanese brand. Back then, I like to use Japanese brands and they are very popular, much earlier than the K-Beauty. This is it. I use this for work, dinner and dance, evening events. I use this on my friends. I use this when I was a bridesmaid many many times, team times. 
and I use this when I attend wedding dinner and use this on the bride. I actually hit pan on it. I'm not so sure whether you just can see the hole over here. And now I've stopped using this because this is very old. But I still keep for sentimental reason. Alright, this question of the day. Which is your oldest eyeshadow palettes? Please comment in the comment section below, yeah? Thank you so much. And last but not least, here's an inner beauty tip for us to be more beautiful and more white. May your day be as flawless as your makeup. Alright, dears, that's all for the sharing today. Hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also, remember if you want to do this video, please give credits to Samantha March and Eddie Glines because they are the original creator for this tag. And may you, dears, have a peaceful, blissful, and joyful week ahead. See you next time. Bye!